finally catch up to his style, you know. Um, and uh, there were a lot of big things in boxing um, in the weeks, the Saul Canelo Alvarez and the Prince going back and forth. And I wanted to talk about that. But there was one in particular story that I was working on yesterday that I sat down and I started going through was the fact that on Box, box Rec, the WBA world title is not being recognized as a world title right now. And I went on and I looked up Terrence Crawford's four belts and all his WBA titles have been removed. Um, Tank Davis, all his WBA titles have been removed. They're saying that the fight with Frank the Ghost Martin was for no belts. Now, oh yeah, anyway, got all his WBA titles removed. In fact, all boxers on Box Rec have have no re um they don't recognize any fighter for the WBA world title. And I was saying to myself, what does this all mean? You know, um, about, and my, my guest is here. He's about to join us. We're going to talk about all this. So stay with us. What's up, Camachito? How you doing? In the hey, hey, what's going on? Oh, I, yeah. uh, I think I, I messed up. I didn't um, connect this to Facebook. Uh, oh, that, that's all right. We, we, you could uh, record and send the link to Facebook and tie it all in later. So, uh, Camachito, I was sitting here, I was talking with the guest. I was going to go on 15 minutes before and talk with my guest. I got a little bit of editing meaning now to do in the beginning because I was talking for like 11 minutes with no mic, with no audio. So it oh, goes wow. to show you that I wasn't on and didn't check some things out. But we have a lot of boxing to talk about. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to Round One Sports Talk. I am always your go host, Edwin, and this is my co-host, Camachito. Camachito, say hi to the people. What's my up? People. And, you, already uh, have somebody, you, you already have somebody riled up in your chat saying that's bullshit. What did you do? What's bullshit? I don't know. Somebody on your chat is saying that's bullshit. So oh yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill you in on what we were just talking about. Okay. I'm gonna bring you in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what's bullshit is that um, yesterday I went on to Box Records, right? And I was gonna do a little story about Manny Pacquiao, Naoya in a way, and what do the people view more prestigious, the alleged eight divisions or unified and two separate weight divisions. So I happened to go on Box Rec, and I found out that Box Rec removed all the WBA world titles off of Box Rec. If you were to go to Box Rec right now, they have Terrence Crawford with only listed with three belts. All his WBA titles have been removed. All Naoya Inouye's titles, WBA titles, have been removed, which is this one. And as we all know, I was just talking with the fans, and I was telling them that one of my subscribers said that they think that the box reg no longer acknowledges the WBA as a world title. And I said, I don't think box reg got that kind of power. When we're talking about the WBA is the original belt. All these other belts spun off of the WBA. That's the original, the original belt. So I was like, wow. So, and then I said, this is just me speculating. This is just me hypothetical. I don't know this to be true. I said, maybe Box Rec did send notifications out to fighters like um, um, Tank Davis and told them they were going to do away with either the super belts or they were going to clean up their interims. Right. So what they were going to do was, is, you know, start taking away some titles um, from some people and notifying them that they no longer acknowledge them as a champion fix the structure in the organization, then put their belt standings back out there. So I thought maybe they would be doing something like that. I'm not sure on what's going on with the WBA, but I can guarantee you right now, if you go to box record, there isn't a fighter on box record that's getting acknowledgement for their WBA world title. You see, they got Terrence Crawford right now and his two weight divisions, which we know, I made a video about this, Terrence Crawford has all four belts. When you go look at the fight with Jeff Horn at 140, they got him three belts. You go look up the fight with Errol Spence Jr., three belts. No WBA, nowhere in sight on box rec right now. And I found that interesting. So I made a video about it. And I guess one of my subscribers is saying that's bullshit because we know that now Yainoue has four belts. And he's the only fighter currently 
that should have four belts. You see? Yeah, yeah. This is the thing. You can't go by uh, box rec. Well, yeah, you know, I, box it, rec it, is sometimes um, box rec is not updated every day. It's supposed to be though. It's supposed to, but it's not because I've had guys that that I've put on my show. Yeah, where box rec has them suspended, where they're not. So when a manager or promoter wants to hit me up to put one of my guys on his show, he doesn't hit me up because thinking that my guy is still suspended. Mm, mm, so mm. I've ran into those issues with box rec. Yeah. See, box rec, I, I ran into that very issue with box rec too, right? And and, and a, a fighter and a promoter. It's funny you say that because um, what box rec is – putting out the suspension according to them according to them um the um the boxing commission sometimes suspend fighters for a lengthy period of time to protect them from themselves like when Errol Spence lost to Terence Crawford they gave, only gave him a two month suspension when Ryan Garcia lost to Tank Davis they gave him a six month suspension after every fight every fighter is suspended until further notification from the boxing to let them know they can start negotiating a fight and coming back. Sometimes guys get in there, knock a guy out, take no damage, and they're quickly moved through the process. In that regard, boxing record, it doesn't have, I guess, the staff to be notified when the suspension was over with. And they over exceed on their box record. It, it like stays up or something, right? Like what you're saying, you know? And I guess, you know, they're not, you know, always in connection with all of that. But, yeah, I found that very interesting. I wanted to know if anybody knew anything about it. But besides that, we have a lot of fights last night that we got to talk about. Let's talk about this. Which one would you like to talk about first? Do you want to talk about Virgil fight, which some people are calling it um, fight of the year or candidate for a fighter of the year? fight of the year or do you want to get right into the Luis Alberto Lopez fight and one of the craziest knockouts that came out of nowhere which one I, I'll let you roll the dice brother you pick which one you want to talk about and let's get into it so let me tell you something actually I would like to call I would like to start from the bottom up only because we had a couple of local guys fighting last say, night say one, less, from, say less. one from Worcester and one from Springfield but but to answer your question, last night I thought of you on that Ortiz fight on your saying where you say they always put the cart before the horse. Yep. And hear me out. This is why I'm saying that. If you notice, um, Turkey Alashik and, and Oscar went on to say that they're going to work on a card where they're trying to pin Ortiz versus Crawford and Shakur versus Cepeda. So I'm thinking to myself, this motherfucker jinx Ortiz because I was thinking to myself, he's losing this fight. He's losing this fight. And I thought at best a draw. He didn't deserve that win last night. All right. That's you feel. Huh? That's how you feel, yeah. That's how I feel. All right. I, well, okay, okay. So, so play, play the fight. You huh? Play the fight in your head. Play the fight in your head. Yeah, play the fighting. I, yeah, I like I like I like your energy. I like where you're going. Just tell the people, play the fight in your head. Tell me who you felt won and why. Well, first of all, um, the bullshit where Ortiz is saying that those weren't knockdowns, they were knockdowns. Okay. All right. So so he's never been the distance with anybody. That tells me that Ortiz cannot go into uncharted waters with uh, a guy better than the guy that he fought last night. So they could they could scrap that Crawford versus Ortiz um, fight because he has no competition for Crawford. They should have okay. caught that a draw last night and let them fight again. Okay. Okay. Okay, so and, um, and and when you're a champion, 
you got to beat the shit out of me to get that belt. Mm. Okay. Well, okay. Here's 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 my take on what I saw last night with my very own two eyes. In fact, I watched the fight already up to right now. I've already watched the fight three times. Um, I watched that fight, and uh, you're right about your statement about the knockdown being bullshit. But the referee and and the fact that they went to instant replay in boxing when the referee didn't count it. Guess what? They did count it. So they did count both of them. So the argument that they didn't count it in during the time, bro, the one that was a victim there was Ortiz because he legitimately didn't get his standing A count just in case he was hurt. So they gave him credit for the knockdown and Ortiz had to engage, okay? Because he didn't want to accept the knockdown, but he, um, the other guy was awarded the knockdown. So that actually benefited the other guy. So as far as the fight goes, when he scored that first knockdown, um, a lot of observers were saying that would be a, considered a 10-8 round, and I disagree. It would have been a 10-8 round, shall he knock down Ortiz and won the round. But the, the round, in fact, was won by Ortiz. So it would have went down as a 10-9 round. It probably wouldn't even went down as a knockdown. By him, Ortiz winning the round, it kind of took that away from him. So that excuse the judging. People are assuming it was a 10-8 round, and they're giving them credit for it. I don't think it was a 10-8 round. I think it was a 9-10 round. And on the second knockdown, the same scenario. In that very round, Ortiz won the round, but he scored the knockdown. And I believe one judge or somebody might have gave him a 10-8 round, but I believe the other ones gave him a 9-10 a, 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 a nine, a nine, round. Then let's talk about the rest of the fight. Since round one, until they halted the action, which was it, in round four or five, that they uh, uh, advised him that the that they, they had that break in the action. Oh, yeah, we're letting you know that we're counting the knockdown. All the way into that point, I felt Voyager Ortiz was winning every round. Yeah, this guy wasn't didn't win any rounds all the way up into that point. He started doing his best work at the middle part. But I got to admit, Virgil Ortiz closed strong. He won the last four rounds in a row. So when people are saying, no, what happened, I think, last night was the fact that a lot of people wanted to see Virgil Ortiz's dominance. And because he's rocking 100% knockout ratio, if he does anything less, I think that the people would have came out and said, you know, oh, Virgil, look. As far as did, my opinion, did, did you did you see Virgil's face? Yeah. Okay. As far as wait a minute, as as far as my opinion goes, right? This was the kind of fight of Virgil Ortiz has been this entire time. We all knew this. We all knew who, what his level competition was. We know who the best fighter he is. By winning this belt, this is just a cop a copy paste from the his last weight division. Wasn't he the interim champion there? Did he not not challenge the champion there, which was Terrence Crawford? He comes into a new weight division and does the exact same thing and considers himself a champion. You just want an interim belt. You're not the champion, right? This is just another Ortiz copy-paste print. And everybody's expecting what? From who? You're putting him in conversations with, with some of the greats when he never stepped over that line. He was never that guy, Virgil Ortiz. So he gets into a, 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 a fight last night for the first time in his career, which I feel. He actually got into a fight where a guy was a little bit more competitive than the, that. So you're going to mean to tell me that you couldn't knock this guy out, but you want Terrence Crawford? You couldn't knock this guy out right here. So this is, this is, look, look, Virgil Ortiz is a very good fighter. He has a good warrior heart. And let me tell you something right now. Good for him for recognizing in the fight when to box, when to bite down on the mouthpiece, and when to go forward. I think that uh, the, the, the Berchicek kid, you know, he did a lot of good work. He did. He had his moments. I, 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 Ortiz's face, like you said, he caught Ortiz with some good shots. 
But I can guarantee you right now that kid Burger Check, he wears punches pretty well. I would like to see what he looks like this morning. Because I know that Ortiz tapped that ass up. And I know Ortiz also had him rocked in several rounds where that his leg was doing the chicken leg and he was trying to grab his composure. And I noticed he did that more than one round to him. And when you get out of the, like, the, 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 the feelings of everybody because there's a part of you, in a sense, anyway, I'm speaking for myself, there's a part of me that says, you see, Virgil was um, exposed right here because this is the shit I'm talking about. This is kind of level of competition. We wanted to see if he can get over. And this kid actually shocked everybody, but he didn't shock you because when I even said that I thought that the fight, they were like, you know, at one time I even called him a cherry pig. I'm sorry I ever called that kid a cherry pig because that kid can fight, right? But he, I even said it. You, you got to watch the people he's picking. And look what happened. He didn't have you fooled. You knew that kid was a, a good fighter. You knew it. Now, did he do enough to take the belt? Let's let's think about this. Chris Colbert knocked down, got knocked down by Jose Valenzuela twice and won the fight. And won the fight. Okay? Ortiz got knocked down twice. And won the fight legitimately, I think, because I don't think that he should have been awarded a 10-8 round for both the times he was knocked out when he was dominating the rounds. The, the, that particular round. And the bird check won other individual rounds, but the rounds that he got knocked down in, he didn't wasn't winning the round. So I was like, so the scoring could be a little miscrewed. No, I don't think that that fight should have been a draw in any way. They, I think for a fight like that, I needed a winner. But you want to know something? I wanted a bit mad. You, need, way. you needed a winner? Yeah, I needed a winner in that fight. Those f men fought their hearts out. You don't fight a fight like that and give me a draw. What you can give me is a rematch. Take whoever you want to pick for a winner, but give me a rematch. But I need, a, I, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't white, sweep that kind of fight under the table when it's going to be like fighter of fight of the year and the result was a draw. Guess what happens? You don't get elected for a fighter of the year on a draw. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, I, I needed a winner. I needed a winner. And, and like a, a Prince Alex, she was whispering in Ortiz's ear. I would like to see that fight again. He said, I would like to see that fight again. And you know, Virgil, come on, every single time the camera's in his face, what's he say? Yeah, I want that Terrence Crawford fight. What's he do? Never fights him. Okay? So we've, we've, we've heard this story before. We've seen this. Every time he gets into a weight division where well, he now, can't now, fight the now, champion, he wins the intro. Now he's calling the winner of uh, Fondora Spence. So. Yeah, I've heard boxers say a lot of shit. Right, right. Yeah. That don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Until I see them sending over contracts and them going into training camps, then we'll talk about it. Because I'm going to tell you right now, oh, Fendora's sister fought. Mm -hmm. You seen her? Huh? She, she put it on that girl. Listen. Hey, I, it, that was a master class. Look, I I like her the little changes she's starting to make more. She, she's for, for that weight. Her. For that weight. She's a problem for anybody just because yeah. her reach and how tall she is. And, and she's listen, that girl she fought yeah. is a warrior. Yeah. She didn't want to listen. Yeah, you got to give it to that girl. She came listen, to fight. I, but, I, I, but, I give but, it to but, their father. I give it to their took, father. She for took training. A she took yeah. a beating. Yeah. You know, their their father is really like um taking his son and daughter right now and they're both world champion that's got to be so such you know as a father like you know simultaneously your daughter and your son and if anybody got anything to talk to you about training like you're not a real coach really really mother like i got two <laughs> at the same time what like you don't say nothing to me about coaching you know yeah, that's crazy that's, that's, that's crazy that, it's that's crazy and he's coaching them like in his garage type shit. I mean, now they're building a gym and they got a place. Right, to right. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. But, mm -hmm. but 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 before, you know, 
That's that's a father. Well, 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 now the cheese is coming. Now the cheese is coming in. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. I mean? Now we start to get gems and shit. <laughs> yeah, listen. Let me let me let me let me check my um. My messages and shit get back with my fans. Yeah. Uh, yo, listen, chat out there, frontline, all right. Um, bam, bam, everybody in the building. It's good to be back. It's good to be talking to you guys. You know, uh, yo, could you see the messages? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm um, if you can um, just read off some some yeah. of the messages for me. Yeah. Listen, the Luis Alberto Lopez, that style. Where, where did he go? What'd you do? He done popped off my screen. He done pressed the button he shouldn't have pressed and done got off the screen. He'll be back. Yo, but this Luis, uh, um, look, guys, I, I, I. Uh, you guys know how I feel about Luis Alberto Lopez. You know, um, I think that, you know, his style is uh, a wild style, right? And um, I've always felt like somebody was going to catch up to him. Like somebody was going to catch him and they were going to time him, right? Now, last night when I saw him in that fight, I knew right away there he is. I don't know what happened. I know you might have pressed the button. You shouldn't have. Yeah, so we was yeah. getting into the Luis Alberto Lopez. And uh, what'd you think about that last night? And this is where I was, you know, last night, what I saw was every single time I thought I was going to watch a Luis Alberto Lopez fight. I thought somebody was going to catch him in the timing. And it seemed like nobody could. He beat the shit out of young flowers, you know, and the list was going on. And it seemed like, it looked easy to catch, but it must have been faster than what people can adjust to it, right? So last night, what I saw was a fighter train, have a game plan, and he was catching him in those moments. He was catching Luis Alberto Lopez when he was trying to come in with that little lunging shit, and he was showing good timing. At times, he was missing. Sometimes he would miss, and then... um. Lewis would come over and hit him and shit, right? But I got to admit, I'm watching that fight, and that knockout came out of nowhere. That knockout came out of nowhere. I'm saying in my... Listen, there was times in that fight where, you know, I'm not one for boxing conspiracy, but there was times that I was saying, what the hell is Venado doing? Like, it looked staged at times. You know, it, it, it's just crazy the way he was fighting and, you know, complaining. Stay. When have you ever seen Venado leave his chin open the way he left it? Listen, this is another thing. This every another, fight. Every time someone starts talking about the Japanese monster, they lose. <laughs> Every time someone starts talking about the Japanese monster, they lose. Well, 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 well. Luis Alberto Lopez right now. Um, that that's my pro, that's my point. That was my point. That there hasn't been a fight I've ever seen a man that he doesn't leave his chin exposed. He's always his chin was always in the air like this, and he fights with his hands down, and he has that lunging shit, and his guard was always right here. He always put it here and left this part always open. The he was highly fight. critical. The whole man, I went in, I went back to fights just to see why he was fighting the way he was fighting. He fights like that though. No, no, I've listen, I've gone back to fights where it, it was just crazy last night the way he was just put him himself out there. You you want to know something? You want to know something? Check this out, right? I've been there. I, I'm not sure what Lewis was going through or whatever, but I'm going to tell you something right now. When you're winning, the more you win, you start to even win a little bit easier the next time. I think that the Benal, he got into a position where that he was seeing that his style was like so dominant. He actually was so arrogant. Let's remember, let's play the night out. He went to this guy's hometown. When he was the champion, he fought the guy in his backyard 
because that's how Luis Alberto Lopez gets down. He liked it to beat the guys in their own backyard. He started getting like a name for it. I think he got cocky, a little too cocky. And then I think he started to believe in his, that no one can hurt him. You start to adapt this mindset that I got an iron chin. And you start to, to, to start to do things and create bad habits. And it got worse. It's like Dante Wilder. He fell in love with the right hand and he forgot how to box. Some boxers, and I think that that's exactly what happened to Lewis last night. He was so arrogant, so cocky, that you could see that when he got knocked out, the tears were flowing because the hurt was real. Because in his head, you get to that status that every single time he walked in the ring, he was like the underdog with the belt. No one, they always thought he was going to lose. When he won the belt, they were like, well, he won the belt, but his next title fight, he's going to lose it. He kept winning. He kept winning. And I think he was too full of himself. And I think that he thought that this guy didn't have enough power to knock him out, seeing that he tasted his power throughout the fight. Boy, did he just walk into one. I think he was just arrogant. Do you know that this morning I posted it on, on my social media. Shakur, before the Venado um, Angelo Leo fight, picked Leo to win. He even went to social media and say, I'm going to make money. I'm going with the underdog. But as of this morning, I posted what he said. He was like, wow, I didn't mean no harm for the guy. I hope he's okay. Only because only because he bet against him. Yeah. Now, when your body and your back snaps, your head snaps off the canvas, when you, you didn't have no support brace on the way down, that means at some point your lights were out. When you hit the canvas, you might have woke back up. But he hit that canvas. That was like a sack of potatoes. Okay? He turned his lights out for a minute. I think what woke him up, with his head whipping back violently against the canvas Man. is what woke his ass up a little bit. And then he was like frozen. He, could, he couldn't move. You, you ever see those NFA players get rocked real bad and then their hands start throwing up gang signs? They're like this on the floor. They're like, like that, right? Had Benel not had any boxing gloves on, that's exactly what you would have seen his hands doing. You ever Man. see their... Their feet lock. Their feet uh, lock. Uh, that that knockdown right there could be one of the year. I'm gonna tell you. Well, it, it it could be a knockout of the year candidate. He's got a lot of uh, you know, he's got a lot of competition. Seeing that Francis Ungano got knocked the fuck out brutally by Josh Anthony Joshua, that was such a knockout. He put him on his back, right? So that counts for the year. He's going up against that knockout. You got the knockouts with Naoya Inoue, which knocked out fucking, yo, his neck violently jerked off the ropes. You got Tank Davis knocking Frank the Ghost Martin out like that with the uppercut in the straight right all across, just like Naoya Inoue. Um, you got some pretty strong <laughs> knockouts. What I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is that the recoverment of the knockout, all these guys... When they left the ring, they left in their in, in their own power with their own power. Okay, and they were okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? But he needed help to the dressing room. He would still he was still there. As a matter of fact, he had a, a um someone else, one of the boxers, go over there and give him support. Yeah, talk to him because he was still dazed. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's why no, I say he's not that. Caught. He got called lovely. What made me laugh was the referee counting. The referee was like, two, three. I'm like, yo, dude, what are you counting for? <laughs> Help that man. <laughs> Homeboy was celebrating on the rope. The referee was like at nine, nine. And yo, and he, but I was on the floor like this, like, nigga, help me. <laughs> Help me. Listen, he couldn't believe it. Yo, he was out. I, ah. That has to do a lot to your pride. 
What? You know what I'm saying? That hat really does and shit. And 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 the fact that, you know, um, the, the little things in boxing that I notice, right? Uh, he's wearing Benau's belt in the ring. You know what I'm saying? And when he won the fight, they took the belt that Benau has, and, you know, you wear that. And those little moments, you know, probably a lot of people don't understand that. But when I see it, I know what I'm looking for. And I was looking at the belt, and I was saying, yeah, that's Benau's belt. That's what you want. That's everything right there. You know, to beat the guy and to wear his belt after the fight. Now, in the locker room, I'm giving it back. Here you go. That's yours. That's yours. I don't want your belt. I want a brand new one. They're going to send me mine. <laughs> but, but when you win it in the ring, I didn't, I didn't want to. You don't want to put on a brand new belt that no word. No, no champion had that around his waist. Right. That's been now real belt that he defended. He bring that belt into multiple fights. That same exact belt. He would became a champion off that belt. He fucking knocked people off with that belt. That fucking belt, he wore it. There's nothing better than that. And I'm looking down at you like this. I got your belt on. Woo! That, oh, man, that's what I do it for. And then I'll, 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 here's your belt. Give me my new one. But that's where the, as a fighter, that's my inner warrior. That's where I want to be. That's, that's what I want. That's what I live for. You know what's best about it? He was in his hometown. I know, I know. I, hometown. I you know. know like, Benado had this, uh, you know, I'm the road killer. He, he, he I, thought I he go, was invincible, bro. I, he go thought he was the road, I go on the road and, uh, and I, I kill you. you yeah, no, nah, no, nah, nah. you just made his party. You helped him building his name and his party in his hometown. And being his the hometown. He Boy. just did a hometown title fight thanks to you. When you didn't have to do that, I think he just thought too much of himself. I think he, 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 he you know, he, he thought too much of his own bullshit to tell you the truth. And like, it was, you're, you're right. Right. He was criticized for keeping his chin up. He made adjustments. It wasn't like all the time, the entire fight last night with Le, um, Leo, he, he was just so cocky. He was, he was up here with it. He was so cocky. And kudos for um Leo, man. Fucking, he said, there it is. Boop. Knocked him out, man. It, it was incredible. Looked, it just looked so simple the way he did it. It looked. Yeah, 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 I'm not yeah. saying it is, but it just looked so. You, let, me, let me tell you something, Jose, right? In this day and age, right, where that it's true, a lot of, a lot of lies were revealed and social media has. Um, try to debunk so many things, but with the next person desperately wanting being that next person to prove a sport or anything else wrong, that I think at some point we lost our way. Nowadays, when we see real shit happen, we, we don't want to believe it anymore. It has to be a fake. It has to be a conspiracy. And that's how the world has me viewing things. And just for instance, I don't want to get off topic, but when I saw Donald Trump get shot already, they were trying to say it was a conspiracy, that it was fake, that it's a fake bandage, blood. No, brother. Um, there was too many people there that saw footage with the persons getting shot in the audience, and he was really dead. And those were his brains all over that fucking thing. Like, like when real shit happens... We're going to challenge it now because that's how the world has us, that all sports are fake, that it's all rigged. And in fact, real quick, that's impossible to do. And if anybody was to ever sit back and think about it, there's no way on God's green earth any sport can be scripted. That's, that's, that, that's almost virtually impossible. In order for something to be scripted, both sides would have to be in on it. You mean to tell me that every year the NFL gets together and tells the Dallas Cowboy um, manager, fucking that crazy ass dude, that you're not going to win again this year and that Tom Brady's just going to win every year, Iron Roger, and that you're going to fall into obscurity or the next Dan Marino, you're a good kid, but we already got a script. You don't think no one would ever got out and, and wrote a tell-all? In order to do that, you would need the all the way down to the water boy. And let's just think about this logically. One of the reasons, just one of the reasons, not the main reason, but one of the reasons why they pay Tank Davis $33 million a fight 
is so that no bookie can ever get to him. He has enough money to pay off his debt. What are you going to give Tank Davis? He's already making $33 million. What are you going to give him another $33 million? You have people coming to your website dropping $10 million bets like you're the only gambling website in the town. It doesn't work. The only reason why you could rig sports at a lower level college is because they're not getting paid and those kids are hungry. Whenever you see in a sport that a referee is cheating or maybe one or two players, that's exactly what that's called, cheating. Not rig sports. That's two or three individuals cheating. You can't rig anything. You don't have enough money. That's why they pay these athletes that kind of money. There is no bookie in the world that's going to have um, um, uh, Patrick Mahone underneath his thumb when he's making $200 million contract. You don't got enough power to control those guys. But yet, people are going to be under the assumption that Super Bowls were blown. And all this other crazy and weird fucking theories. When when basic human shit happens, these guys are tired in the fourth quarter. They're not reacting like the first quarter. And you're going to judge them for what a player he could have been. Sometimes people fall asleep at the line. Sometimes they don't catch shit, right? And that's what happens. But to think this absurd thing that any, and I mean, and I repeat, any sport in history was ever scripted, bro, you need to think about what you just said. You need everyone from the water boy to stay quiet for the rest of their lives. You mean to tell me you got a script like a WWE and an organization with hundreds and hundreds of th people that are not making the same money and that jealousy is a real thing. You mean to tell me there is no way you can do that. You couldn't do that in nothing in life. You can cheat. Yes, cheating is a real thing. You can hire a guy. You can buy a ref. That's cheating. Script? <laughs> you will never pull that off. That's why they give out all this money. But anyway, when I seen that last night, I got to admit, I don't think that Lopez was down to get knocked out. I don't think that it was a script fight and he just stood there and said, I want you to knock me out in your hometown and I want everybody to wake up and make memes about me in front of my wife and kids. I don't think a fighter does that. And I don't think he wants to give up his star status and all his money and endorsements and sponsorships that he has while he's champion. Part of his success due in part to championship. Without championship, no moolah, baby. And I don't think guys do that. You see? And, and, and you know, sometimes in this world, we need to step back when real shit happens. Stop trying to make it fake because it seems like it's the norm. It seems like everybody, when you can't explain something, oh, it, that was reenacted. He was in on it. He was, uh, bro. Just like when Jake Paul knocked out that fucking MAA um, fighter. Oh, no, that was scripted. You see, when he went like this with his hand, he gave him the signal to punch him. Yeah. You mean to tell me that black dude said, I want to get knocked out by this white boy in front of my mother that almost had a heart attack in the stands and that I signed up for that? That I agreed to go home tomorrow, my girl will probably leave me. You let that white boy knock you out? Bro, we know the reality and the truth, what they was going to say to him. You think he just is like, oh, yeah, Jake Paul, I want to make your star status better for a couple bucks in my pocket. And I want to be that guy that walks around that everybody goes. You think people sign up to that? He got knocked out straight up by that dude. And it's just like it's like alarming that now that we're watching real shit happen and we got in our yo and that's the fucking Internet for you. That's everything around you. It, there's so much distraction in the world as it is that nowadays we can't even determine what's real and what's not. You know, the other day, I don't want to, you know, too much off subject, but that cop killed that innocent woman. You know what they're saying now? That the cop had a demon soul inside of him and that he was possessed. People can't see shit for what it was. Right. Bro, that was a murder. Plain as day, that was a murder. Th that, don't give that cop a way out. Ain't no possessions. No, 
He killed that woman, unfortunately. Condolences to her family. Much respect. Okay? That was a murder. That's it. Don't, 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 don't sugarcoat nothing for this guy. He's a murderer. In my eyes. I saw, I witnessed the murder. I don't know what you saw, but I see no demon possessed him. That's a fucking world, man. Not seeing real shit and trying to put something behind it of why. So it makes sense to their sick little way, way of thinking of what they've been trained to view on social media. And now nothing is real. Absolutely nothing is real in their world anymore. Everything has to have this unique story behind it to make sense of it all. Nah, man, shit happens. And I done done some shit in my life before, and I'm sure you have too. And you know real shit happens every single day. Yes, every sir. Day. You know? And then, uh, you know, you know, you know. Uh, and then these kids are out here killing each other. This rapper, Fulio, he's all over the social media. And first, what they say, that was a design hit. You see how they were set up? They, that was military. That was the cops. And when they found out that it was some teenagers and they showed their debacle and everybody started saying these are the dumbest criminals in the world. But the first initial story, the cops took out Fulio. That that was a tactical team. You see how they were dressed up and you see where they were going with the story. They were making up all this kind of crazy shit about Fulio's death. And when it came out, it was a bunch of kids. Now, what, what happened to the tactical movement they were displaying? What happened to the precision? What happened to the organized? They saw it for what it really was. It was just a blunder of fucking, you know. But anyway, back to boxing. Listen, that's how I feel social media is playing us. We have to be careful what we deem to be true or factual. Um, sometimes real shit happens in this world. I believe Louis, um, Louis um, Alberto Lopez got too cocky for whatever easy way. I mean, when, let me tell you something right now. When Leo hit him, Leo was surprised. Leo was surprised that how, how he went down. So when I looked at Leo's face too, I was like, damn, he, he, he caught him in that button. There's a button that'll turn you off. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, almost everybody has it. And I think Leo actually pressed that button and he got that kind of reaction. But I'm going to tell you right now, I've, I know bullshit when I see it, right? When, let me explain something to you. When someone gets, tries to fake a knockout, the one thing humans cannot pretend is not to fall the right way. They don't know that their body has to turn off and their muscles have to turn off. They can't right. fake no matter if a human is faking a knockdown, they always have a tendency of bracing themselves. You see, they can't play that off because the human body is fighting against you saying, yo, I'm falling. So your body's reacting to it. You see what I'm saying? Subconsciously, you start to like stop from falling. When I saw his head bounce off that fucking mat and his back hit the ground like that, I knew that that wasn't fake. I knew that that wasn't, you know what I'm saying? And, and plus, bro, you saw him backstage. The tears were pouring out. It was like all the emotion and shit. And I was just like, nah, what I'm witnessing here is some real shit. A man, he got shocked. He got beat. His pride is hurt. And that's what you see. I I, I don't think you should have showed him he was crying as much, right? But I could feel his pain. I could feel his pain. And I know if he had to do it over again, he probably would have fought him a little bit different. Not so arrogantly. He would be protecting his chin. At, at least, at least, right? At least. He would be protecting his chin. He at was least. Out, he was out there the whole night. He didn't respect him. Sooner or later, you're going to get caught. Yeah. If you fight like that the whole night, I mean, I literally went back to look at other fights because I could, I could not remember, especially someone that I'm thinking that can meet the 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 Japanese monster sometime down the line. Yeah. Right? Right. Um just go back and, and, and see there was there was something. I understand people have off nights. When he had, when he fought nights. flowers when he fought flowers he was a bit more defensively sound. You know when I saw that fight against the young flowers and everything when he uh look 
And like you say, everybody, when they say now, oh, yeah, you know way's name, <laughs> they fucking lose, bro, they right? Fuck it, they fuck it up. What's, fuck what's it the up. first thing? What's the first thing that Leo just won the belt? What name he said out his mouth? <laughs> say it. <laughs> Yo, he's done, son. He's done. <laughs> he's all done. <laughs> right? Look, okay, at 126, talk to me. Talk to me, right? At 126 pounds, who's the best champion right now? Uh, I think it's Espinosa. It's between, for me, for me, I like Espinosa because Vargas, Ray Vargas, he's shown a lot of chinks in his armor. His last fight, he didn't look good at all in, and I thought he was getting his ass kicked, right? So, um, and then he moves up in weight, and he wants to try to, like, push himself, and he didn't look good in that fight, so he's coming back down. So I'm like, all right, ball? Ball? I mean, Ball's okay. He's another fucking, you know, um, Lopez kind of, a little bit more defense, right? But now you got Ball, you get Vargas, Ray Vargas, you got Espinosa, and the new, newly acquired Leo. And Cubano, Which one of those champions you think? Hey, oh, you're talking, about, way, you're talking about the champions, okay. Yes, okay. yes. Which one of those champions? Because I think that now we are anyway is going to move up to fight a champion right away. You know how he does. He doesn't fight tune-up fights or acclimated fights. He, he don't Straight to the about, champion. He don't care about all those belts. No, he, no, no. He, he don't, he don't go, do with I'm silly fights. More. No, no, no. My, my man is on some real championship video game status shit. Now, oh, yeah, anyway, when it comes to that dude, I got to give him his respect as a fighter. You got to acknowledge what he's doing. Four weight divisions each time, champion after champion after champion. No tune-up fights. This will be his 22nd consecutive world title fight. Right? So, him moving up, if he was to... Well, well it wouldn't be his 22nd. It would probably be his 23rd because he's already got TJ Doheny. I think he beats TJ Doheny. I'm not going to count TJ Doheny out. I always give every fighter their respect. But I think he's going to beat him. And if he was to enter the 126... Which of the 126 champions you think would fight him? And which one would be the best fight? Who do you think is the best fight for him? No one. No one? No you don't one. even give Espinosa with his length being the tallest, the tallest 126 pounder in history. He you don't think just, he will just that to the body until this and that kid right now i don't think i mean i don't need him to go crazy and start 26 30 30 you know what i mean do something yeah, yeah. that no one has ever done because now you know but even at 26 i don't see anybody beating him yeah listen oh yeah anyway and his father shingo they definitely they look over fighters they do come up with a game plan you can see how the Japanese superstar fights every fighter different and he adapts to their style. What he does is try to beat them at their own game and then dominate them to show them that their style couldn't beat his. You see, in a lot of his fights, I've paid close attention to Naoya Inoue and throughout his career. And in the many, many, many fights, he seems to change in, right into the guy that's standing in front of him. He starts to like mirror the guy in front of him, right where his hands are and everything. And at those small incidents in the fight, he's letting you know he's beating you at your own game. He won't sustain it. He won't fight the whole fight like that. No. When he turned into Stephen Kubo Fulton's Philly Shell style, that's not his style, but he did it. When he turned into Paul Butler, when he turned into Emmanuel Rodriguez, Emmanuel Rodriguez came in with the high guard like this. Now, oh yeah, anyway, stood right in front of him, put his hands exact same position, and went head to head with him like that. That's not how he fights. Now, oh yeah, anyway, fights like this. You see what I'm saying? But I've seen, and you know, some people might not see these subtle things, but I see it, and it tells me that. He is a superior fighter. He is in a remarkable talent as a fighter. Not every fighter can make reads. Not every fighter knows how to make adjustments. Not every fighter knows how to cut off the ring. 
Now, Oya Inoue seems to be the complete package as he's far as... He's a natural. As far as, you know... He's a natural. Just, he's a natural. You know, there's it's no just, Superman. There's no Superman in the world. Uh, there's no boxer that's ever going to be perfect. Every boxer you can criticize for either being hit, not being the best in one avenue, okay? There is no Superman. Now, Oya Inoue is not Superman, but it, it damn it if he's not the closest thing to Hold one on. of the best fighters. All right, you are right. Ray Vargas did, did lose that last fight. I agree with you. And Bam Bam Boogie, uh, Leo is American, actually, not Asian. Yep. He's American, born in Albuquerque, New Mexico, of Mexican parents. Yep. He, no, because he's asking if he's Mexican or Asian. He's American, Mexican-American, born in America. Yeah. yeah. Albuquerque, so, where he won that belt last night. That's where he's from. That was his hometown. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, as far as the 126 pounders weight division, now, oh, yeah, in a way, the only one I, I thought, because I always saw if you were going to beat Naoya in a way that you were going to have to bring something to the table. You were either going to have to have height, reach. If you were evenly matched with him in height and size, you're not going to beat him. You had to bring some kind of attribute to the fight, power, like massive power or an, a, a crazy jab. You got to bring something to the equation. And I thought, well, I still think that Espinosa's height and length and the way he was fighting in his last fight, he feels like he's a champion. He fought like a champion, and he didn't fight no tomato can, okay? Espinosa went out there and fought the ranked opponent. I think he was number two or something. So he went after him. So you can't call that guy no damn tomato can. And the way Espinosa put those hands on that man, He's fighting. He feels. He believes he's a champion. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get this right. Let me. Let me. Let me get. Let me get this right. Are you telling me that in that fight you're going against your fighter? No, or no, no, no. I would never say that. I'm not saying. Don't, 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 don't are go. You, are you don't me get crazy. Me? Don't go. Get, don't get crazy. Listen. All I'm saying is. All I'm saying is. Is that. When it comes to building a fight for me, for the fans, as a reporter, you know, always being blatantly honest doesn't serve the fighter. If I want to speak facts like from my heart, what I really believe, you're not going to want to hear that because it's going to be a one-sided conversation. Now, what I do here at my boxing channel is that at least I'm giving these guys the benefit of doubt for being who they are, world champions. I'm not going to count them out. What I believe... It's going to happen. It's totally might not be the same of what I'm going to report. What I'm reporting to you are fights, challenges, obstacles. These men deserve the right to be talked about as champions. Espinosa is a world champion. Vargas is a world champion. Ball, world champion. And a newly acquired Leo, world champion. So damn it, if you can do that, that means that you're somebody and you can fight. And at any given night, we, as we can all see, when um, Luis Pantera Nari dropped the monster in the first round, as you can see, anything can happen in a fight. So I want to see the monster go to these weight divisions. I want these fighters to hear this video. Give that dude a chance at that title. Let's see what happens. Even to even 130? I think that the monster, in fact, can fight all the way up to 135. If Tank Davis can fight at 135, now we ain't away can fight at 135. If 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 Isa Pitbull Cruz, around, he walks around in the 40s. Okay, if Isa Pitbull Cruz at 5'3 can be the 140 pound at with those skills. Why would I doubt now we are anyway can't slide in there? Maybe he might not be able to beat everyone in the division. But do I think he has enough skill to secure a title? All you need is one title to be considered that world division world champion. You don't have to go after all four. You don't have to beat every top guy. 
Do I think he has enough skill just to beat one world champion? To solidify that as a real weight division with a real belt, I think he could do it, slide through. How many times did I see dudes just slide through, pick up one belt in a division, and move up to the next one? He never had to get all four. He never had to be- fight the best guys in the division. He just needed to secure a belt. And if you're asking me if a man like Naoya Inoue possesses those kind of skills that he can move up two more weight divisions, just have two fights and pick two different champions, yeah, he can do that. You're fucking right. I believe a man like that can do that. How do I don't think. See, how do you see a, a Tank Davis and in, uh, Inoue fight going? Ah. Uh... That's a dream fight, bro. That's a that's a true. Would you still would you still go with the monster? Listen, listen to me, brother. It happened to all of us in full display for the world to watch. When Terence Crawford fought against Ismail, Ismail was a fairly unknown fighter with a real small professional record. But what did you see in that ring on that night? What you saw was. The name Terrence Crawford came across Ismail's table and it brought the best out of him. He fought the best he ever fought in any fight because of his dancing partner. Because it was Terrence Crawford. It wasn't no regular name. And they knew the severity of the fight. That man trained his ass off, I bet, for that fight. He studied a lot of film. They did their homework and it showed. And they put up a guy with a very small professional record against arguably the pound-for-pound best fighter on the planet. And he was able to go 12 rounds with him? It goes to show you what you got out of that man was the best version of that man. You have to understand that if Tank Davis and Naoya Inoue were to fight, the kind of training they would go into... The mental preparation, the you would see the best version of Tank Davis no one has ever seen. And you would also get the best version of Naoya Inoue. I'm going to tell you something right now. That American slick style, our American boxing style, it's proven to be the best fighting style on planet Earth. Even Borovicek, that kid, Last night against Ortiz. Who's his coach? You know who his coach is? That Mexican dude, Manny um, um, uh, Manny, um Robles. It ain't no Ukrainian coach. It's because we know. Now, yeah, in a way, doesn't look like that because of Japanese fighting. Okay? So, they know how to adapt. They know how to change. And it just goes to show you that, look, man. Boxing's evolving. I think that really it's up to your dancing partner that brings the best out of you. That fight would be so crazy on so different levels. The way I think that it should play out, I don't think it's going to play out. I think they're going to take away things and turn the other fighter in certain sequences to not fight the same way. Meaning, that if I saw Virgil Ortiz in the ring with Terrence Crawford, he would not look like he looked last night in that ring against that kid. He's not. All that warrior sp- Oh, Ortiz is biting down on the mouthpiece. Ortiz is really bringing it. None of that shit's going to happen with Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford's going to shut that shit down. He's going to look like a different fighter. So in this aspect, when it comes to Nao Yainoue and Tank Davis... That's gonna be so explosive, bro. Yeah, Anything. that's not that's not gonna happen. And if it does, it's it's uh years yeah. away from happening. Years yeah, away. it's a dream fight. Uh, it's a dream fight. You, fight. Let me tell yeah. you what's what's closer to happening with the monster. Let me tell mm-hmm. you what's closer. And remember, I'm telling you this today. The that. Japanese are gonna keep all the moolah. They're gonna keep all the moolah because. I guarantee you that down the line, depending on what weight class they make it, they will make a NOA Nakatani match. Oh, that's 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 more reality. That's a more reality fight that's than a take Davis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, no. That's that's you see in any well, 
in any weight division, just like the Americans find out that soon you're going to have to fight your own American fighter to prove who's the best between you and him, like Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. did, right? Japan is going to find out the same exact thing. Soon you're going to have to prove who the best Japanese fighter is. Those are some of your top Japanese fighters, but among Japanese crowds, there's a lot of Naoya Inoue supporters, and there's a lot of Junto Nakatoni supporters that believe that Junto can beat Naoya Inoue. So eventually they're going to have to collide. That's going to happen. Now, before they collide, I believe that Junto Nakatoni will beat up Naoya Inoue's kid brother that's in his same weight division Wait, that holds the title. So he's going to beat up on him, and then Big Bro is going to have to come back and revenge him, right? Because I don't think Little Bro has enough to keep off Junto off of him. He has good skill. Yeah, I just don't no. think he possesses enough to keep him off. You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But so that fight is a really good fight. That's a great fight right there in itself. I think that Junto would possess a lot of challenges for Naoya in a way. But in that fight, I'll take experience over anything. And until Naoya in a way is defeated, I got him in that fight against Junto. You know, I think Junto is a good fighter. I think Naoya in a way forgot more about boxing than Junto knows. Okay. I think that Junto is a strong fighter. I think he's pretty crafty, but Naoya in a way is he's, he's really, when I listen, he's really ahead of his time when it comes to this fighting shit. Um, the, the reason why is because what he's doing, he's never throwing a punch with nothing, no meaning behind it. Every punch he throws basically is to set you up to another one. He's usually thinking two or three steps before you. If he's catching you in these windows that are like this big, the way he caught Jason Maloney in his exchange, when Maloney tried to hit him, he popped him and his Maloney's punch went right by him. It's like he tilted this way, snapped this way, and it, it was amazing to watch. When you understand things like that as a fighter, I think uh, that the Japanese superstar is just that much better in different areas. Ring IQ, footwork, power. They might be even in power. Nah, I don't know. Um, it might, not, it might have a little bit. Speed, even. Um, it's just... Naoya in a way is understanding. He throws a, a, a rangy body shot from a long distance. He doesn't have to be close to you. He could come around your guard and sidestep you and still hit you in the body. A lot of fighters think they were safe against Naoya in a way when they saw him standing on the outside. They blinked their eye. He was standing right here. You know, his first step is dangerous. He He's just a real... He really believes... Like in his training, he's really mastered boxing. He really knows himself. There's just one thing I really haven't seen is a fighter constantly pushing him back and him have to fight going backwards. Um, I saw some fighters like try to push him back. He quickly controlled the center of the ring. And they must be feeling something that a lot of us really don't understand because he's freezing these guys in the ring. He's making them gun shy. And that's remarkable to, to make Stephen Kubo fault in gun shy, which in fact, I thought he lost, he fought last night. Did you get to catch that fight? No. I didn't no. see it either. I didn't, I couldn't catch it. Yeah. I so, um, yeah. So I want to see how he jumps back. But yeah, it's just interesting to talk about these fighters and their different unique styles and puzzles that they present as fighters. And, um, you know, the sky's for the limit for this Japanese guy. Look, we can see the bullshit unfolding with Saul Canelo Alvarez and the prince. The prince offers, offers him $100 million, denies it. The prince is all fucked up behind this. He doesn't like to be told no. Imagine those billionaires. They never get told no. They don't know that word. You know what I'm saying? So Saul Canelo Alvarez is like, you know, um, same shit that... Um, Oscar De La Hoya did last night. He told him, we're going to eat you up. <laughs> Listen. Gonna, I, he, because it's going to be the first UFC fight in Vegas at the Sphere on that same date. 
I know Remember, the spheres open up for the first time. So, <laughs> so um, Turkey is invested also. Yeah. With Dana White. Oh, oh yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. That's well known. Trying, he's trying to make. Now he's more into pushing and promoting that event even bigger since yeah. he wants to prove that whenever he wants, he could do that to even Canelo. Listen, listen, Canelo tried to like um, play on his name. Man, I'm Canelo Alvarez. I don't have to fucking answer his phone call, right? Prince Ali, she says like, I'm fucking the prince and you know I can fuck your shit up. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna, you know what I'm saying? Like, and like the spear, like the rumors that are circulating because everybody's in suspense of what it looks like on the inside. Right. You know, everybody wants to know, yo, what the fuck is gonna look like? Because no one knows. No. You know, it's been. This is the first thing. I've been there. I, I've been there, but I nobody's been to. Well, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. The, the bow. Yeah, we've seen that for years, but mm -hmm. we haven't get inside yet. Right. So now right. it's fine. We're here. We're finally here. And then you got a guy that's giving away cars on last boxing matches. Two hundred k. Yeah, that's just that's just outside. What's he gonna do in a spear, bro? Right? Listen, I'm sorry, Berlinga, but listen. <laughs> right, yo, that's crazy. Yeah. But you see, this is all business and politics. And when you got men throwing around that kind of money, and a lot of egos are colliding, you can see already that um, a lot of people are growing very thin with Saul Canelo Alvarez, but we've been here before, you know, and what do the fighters want? What do the fans want? And you can get them all pissed off. Listen, I had it up to here with that Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford fight for six fucking years. Yeah, bro. Man. I had it up to here with that fucking fight. Yeah. I was tired of all the announcements. I was tired of all the bullshit. I was even thinking about boycotting the fight when it finally got announced. Man, fuck you. I'm a goddamn fan. I pay my money too. Like, I'm tired of you guys stringing us along, right? <laughs> but when it finally arrived, I was like a little kid. Like, yeah! Like, like, like the excitement to watch him in that corner and Arrow in another corner. You know, once we, you know, like we get pissed off and the prince is having, you know... Every, I think everybody's like growing real thin and having no patience no more with Saul because of all his bullshit. But I can guarantee you, if Saul Canelo Alvarez woke up tomorrow and said, "Schedule David Ben the Monster Benavides tomorrow, announce it, it's a contract sign," would they love him again? Would you tune in for his fight? Yeah, goddamn right you would. All right, and you would love him. Just you know, everybody's pissed off at him right now and. So I, I was just busy. listen. I just love the fucking accent. Yeah, I mean, and 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 his antics. Just everybody wants to tune in with all the bullshit they did at the press conference and all their pateria and and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Homophobia that they were doing. You got women out there in TikTok saying, "Damn, I can't wait." I, I can't wait to see what's going to go on be just because of the antics that are going on between these right. two. You know what right. I mean? It's right. crazy. Right. It's right. crazy. Well, speaking of antics, speaking of antics, right? You know, we I'm pretty sure you know all about what's been going on in and out of the Olympics and all the scandals. And the first thing, they're making that surfer take the Jesus Christ picture off of his surfboard and them saying something about religion. I just... I, I cut off the TV at that time. I didn't even want to hear the nonsense. And then the transgender story that broke out that was phony baloney, but it still broke out. And uh, everything else that's been leading behind these Olympics. And it's a damn shame because none of these kids that were competing asked for this. They didn't ask to be involved politically. They didn't ask to share your views. They competed and trained for four years to try to enter this to this tournament to be called the best a athlete at the time. That's what these kids wanted. And you went and took the Olympics and made it into a spectacle. And you have people boycotting the Olympics that didn't watch a shred of the Olympics and cheer our American athletes on. This year, out of any year that I've ever watched in the Olympics, I was in tears 
watching these girls and these men battle for gold. I couldn't believe how these girls ran their heart out on that track. They meddled in that one. They meddled in the two. They meddled. Yo, these girls was rocking. And then we won the fucking 100, right? And then um, our Olympic athlete gets tested corona. A fan yells out and says, you're, 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 you're selfish. You're, you're, you're jeopardizing every other athlete. Well said when that's not your son. And you didn't train for four years to get to this moment. This is not a regularly scheduled baseball game where we can schedule next week. This is four years, lady. I'll just take protocol, but I'm competing. Well said from a fan that didn't like him and wanted her guy to win. You see, none of these kids asked for all this fucking bullshit that came along with all these Olympics. For the first fucking time, our gymnastics teams are meddling. We're winning. And I we, I couldn't be more prouder of these young men and women out there fucking running. You should have saw these girls in the swimming meet. 16 years old. I'm, I'm, I'm rookies. America called on 16-year-old little girls to fight against fucking the rest of the world. Grown-ass women. And you should have saw these girls swimming their hearts out. They was rocking, bro. Yo, man, that Olympic... Just watching the competition and what the the feeling that it that it that it, 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 it just radiates through my body, man. The emotions and and just knowing as a competitor how hard that shit is to do. You're not just fighting and playing in any game. You're competing for world records. And these men and women are out there doing it, and they're using them for your religious beliefs. Or your views on transgender? What the fuck are you doing? You're ruining our Olympics. So I had to be a grown-up in this situation, right? And say to myself, I'm going to watch the Olympics. You know why? Because my American team is out there fucking battling. You know? And and I want to watch competition. I, I don't care about your politics. I don't care about anybody else's views. I know that these kids trained hard and how hard that is to make. Damn it. Let's see them rock. You know what I'm saying? So the Olympic Games, they were better than I've I've seen them in, in many years. You know, no, I know the history of some of the events. We haven't won any of that shit. Yo, you should have seen that white boy, man. I forget his name, bro. It was incredible to watch. It, it blew my mind. It was like the um, it was like the 800 meter or something. They had to run around the track for like mad long time. And like everybody saying the dude with the sunglasses was running away with it. And yo, it, it looked like crazy. The American was coming on the side like this. He was running. And, and yo, the homeboy had the glasses. He had the look. He was like. Trucking and his little American dude with a ponytail, bro. He came out of the left corner. He was like, ah. yo, when homeboy turned like this to look, he was like, oh, shit, he's right there. The line was right here. The American beat him. Bam. Yo, he slapped on him, bro. He came out of like, yo, he just, he put it in another gear. Yo, it was exciting to watch, bro. It truly was. So, um, you know, I can't say enough about it, but listen, man. Um, I, I encourage all of you guys, if you miss these events and you missed our, 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 our kids out there, uh, really trying to put America on their backs and bring back those gold medals. I encourage you to go out there and watch them. There were a lot of special moments in these Olympics. Um, and, um, you know, I just, I support it. I don't support the antics. I don't support their views or their things, but I also support them. You know, what's up, Camachito? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm baffled. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, what, what is this world coming to? One of the, I don't know, man. One, of, one of the moments, you know, that I'm like, but yeah, let's get back to, to what we do. Let's get back. Yeah, to yeah, 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 absolutely. Because, absolutely. Because, you know, there was a couple of guys last night. Um, they didn't get the L's because they were the B side, but also, I want you to tell me what did you think of another up and coming 155, 54 pounder 
in Conwell who fought a Worcester cat. He did? He fought Kyrie, Kyrie Gray from Worcester. Okay, now look, look, check this out, right? Uh, there, uh, there's a lot of room right now at 154 pounds, and it's becoming real crowded. And there's a lot of stars there. Right now, it's it's turning into like, you know, like what was once the 135 became the 140, 147. And it seems like the guys are transitioning throughout the course of times. When you got fighters like Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fandora, Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Crawford, just to name a few, at 154, that kid from Worcester has a lot of work and a lot no, of competition. No, 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 no. No, no, Kyrie Gray lost. You didn't see that liver shot? No no, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish. That kid from Worcester and the other guy, Kyrie, um, your other guy there that won the fight, they're in a a rich division. They're in a rich 154-pound weight division. 154-pound right. weight division is rich right. with right. fighters. Right. They have a lot of work to do. To start, whether or not I believe they look good, they're going to have to crack the first 15, top 15. After they crack the top 15, then we could start talking about who and where and when. You see what I'm saying? I believe Conwell should be ranked and at what? least. Huh? What? For what? And, Conwell and should least, be ranked what? Conwell should be uh, ranked at at least two of the, two of the, um, hold on. I'm going to show you. What? Oh no no! Finish that sentence. Uh, Finish. You said you you're telling me that Conwell is not ranked, right? No no no! I didn't say he's not. No, I never said that. Okay. I said when he starts fighting the top fifteen ranked opponents, when he gets into or starts cracking, like within the top fifteen within any major sanctioning body, then we can start talking about his trajectory. As far as the one fifty four. The stars that I mentioned, there are killers already that are behind them. There's a list of people at 154 that are waiting just to even crack those superstars that I mentioned. The two fighters that fought last night, what are you saying? You think that they're, one of them is good enough to go where? All right. Did you see the fight? No. Obviously, you probably did it. No. It was the co-main event. For what? For whose card? For the Ortiz. Golden boy. Oh, uh, nah. I woke up in the Ortiz fight in the second round the first oh, time. Oh, okay. Okay. So, that's why. So, in the co-main event, Kyrie Gray was the B-side who's from Worcester. Yep. Trains and can't get right. Um, he's right. fought in our show a few times. Right. I know that. Um, fought Conwell, who used to be with PBC. And now know. it's with Golden Boy. Right. Um, Conwell won the fight? Yes. Okay. He's where, he's okay. Where do you place Conwell? Well, did, last night, he said, I'm going to watch the fight very closely, talking about the ortiz Bocek fight. Okay. Because he, uh, Golden Boy might put him up next against one of these guys. Conwell is Conwell is ranked right now. Conwell is ranked right now for the WB. Conwell is ranked. I I I think he's ranked. Look hold it up. up. Look it up. Look it I up. I got it right now. I got you right now. I got you right now. Hold on, hold up. I got I got you right now. I know who you're talking about now. Okay. Okay. He's from he's from Chicago. And I know Chicago. exactly what you're talking about now. Yeah. What the fuck did this? Why is my computer doing this? Oh, I got you. I'm sorry, that's my bag. I'm on this screen. It's that's bad. Okay. 154, right? I'm here. Okay. We got your boy. One hundred and fifty-four pounds. Uh, Terence Crawford's the number one. Marriage check 
Fundora, Tim Zhu, Burchek. Um, okay, so where is he ranked right now? He is for the for the WBA right now, right? Conwell is not even ranked. Hold on. Joe Williams. No, 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 no. Ortiz. He's 20 and old with 15 knockouts. That liver shot was crazy with that liver shot he won last night, even though it was against my boy. But he dropped him what round? Yo, you think he should he shouldn't fight young Xander Zion? Xander Zion has a fight scheduled already coming up. Yeah, I know, I know. And I know. and 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 Xander Zion for the WBO is number three. Ver, for the WBO, Tim Zhu's number one, Virgil's number two, Xander Zion's number three, Josh Kelly's number four. Um Eric Lubin is number five. Errol Spence is number six. Um, Takona Inoue, I mean, I mean, not Inoue, the, the, the heavy one, the, the big 154 pounder is, I don't, can't pronounce his first name. It fucks with me. Um, he's number seven. Um, you got, um, Spooner and, and, and Booker are the last two. And then for the IBF, the number one and number two are vacant. They don't have no ranking for the number one and two for the IPF. Number three is um, um, Erickson Lubin, Tim Zhu, Josh Taylor, Jesse Romans, Alexander Zion. That's the top six, seven. For the WBC is Errol Spence Jr., um, um, Virgil Ortiz. There's your boy. He's number three. He's ranked number three for the WBC. Told you. Yeah, he's ranked I number told three. Told you he has to be ranked then at least. Yeah, and actually, has him ranked Bang Bang three. is right. He's not from Chicago. He's from uh, Ohio. Okay. Ohio. Right. So he's got a he's got a good ranking there. At number three, you got to respect that. He's twenty and all with fifteen knockouts, and he hits like a mule. That liver shot in the second round against Kyrie Gray last night was vicious. Really? So it's another 154 pounder that, you know. You know who I want to see at 160? That kid, Eric Price, Price, the Japanese fighter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming up. He's undefeated. He looks strong. He looks strong. And there's a lot of opportunity at 160. There's nobody there. Who the fuck is at 160 pounds? <laughs> like, like, just name me one fighter from 160. Like, there's not, you know, uh, Look at you even got Danny um um Swift Garcia um um going to come in to fight uh, um um Lara Lara right but come on Lara's 42 years old he's like he's he's past his prime way past his I I respect yo I think he he beat Saul Canelo Alvarez that night right but hey it is what it is but Lara's a good fighter and ring rust is a real thing Danny is coming back fighting in a new weight division, 160. He's never fought there. I never seen him there. So fight, wait, 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 wait. Didn't Danny fight uh one of the brothers in that weight class? No. What was it at 154? Jose um Jose Benavides. What weight class did oh, Danny shit? Fight? What weight class did he fight Jose? Wait, oh what uh 160. 160. No. Check. No. Check. Jose, there's no way Jose fought him at 160. Check. Jose doesn't fight at 160. He's a 147 pounder. He, uh, Jose uh, has fought. Jose Benavides has fought at 154 and 160. And he goes up and down like it's nothing. He has had. Matches at 54 and at 60. 47. I mean, he, that kid's crazy. I want to know. I want to know what weight he fought um, Garcia last. What the hell? You got like five Danny Garcias here. 
and listed in box record. It might have been 154, but for some reason I thought I remembered that uh, um, he was gonna he was gonna fight at 160. It might have been another fight, but I know he fought one time at 160. Jose, Jose Kenny Jose. Garcia is a record has a record of 37 fights, 21 knockouts, and three losses. He um uh that's that's his first fight. Let's go all the way down. Let's see if we can find this Jose fight. And I, I'm curious to see. He fought um uh Sean Porter at 147. He fought um Ivan at 146, Errol Spence Jr. at 147, Jose uh, at 152 and a half. He was 153 and a half. He fought him at that weight. Uh, um, Garcia? Yeah. So they it fought was, at uh, one. It was oh. a 154 fight. Yeah, he, Jose so came who, in. Who has he fought at 160? No one. Are That's what checking, I'm saying. Oh, right. well, right. okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Let's do our investigation. I, I, I don't. Okay. 147, 147, 147, 147, 147, 147, 147, 147, 147, 147, 147, 143, 141, 139, 140, 140, 140, 142, 140, 140, 140, 40, 40, 38. Now we're just getting lower. 39. No, no, listen. I, yeah. Never. I, when he fought Garcia at that weight, I was like, wow. I mean, you know, a kid that's fighting at 140, I mean, you know, he's not his brother, so obviously he's yeah. got to get a payday. You yeah. know what I mean? But, but I think he has the potential of beating Lara. Danny. Absolutely. I think he could beat him. I think uh, he beat yeah. Laura at one sixty. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that fight right there. I think Laura slowed down significantly. That fight right there could go either way. Yeah, I think that Laura slowed down significantly. He his his punch volume per round is lower in recent fights, real low. Um, I understand like being more experienced and knowing not when to like right. And Danny's a a patient fighter. He's a kind of patient fighter that hits hard, you know, and he tries to like break his opponents down to get that sneaky fight. He's kind of like a quiet fighter, Danny. He has like this quiet style that out of nowhere, he just explodes and not in speed, but it explodes in the fact that power punches. And now you start to see he's breaking the guy out when you see him stagger and you realize what Danny was doing. You're like, oh, shit. And now he's coming in. Boom, boom, boom. And um, he's a good fighter, man. He surprised me in a lot of fights. I didn't think he was going to do good in. And he did. And he did. And he showed that Danny belongs. And he's a he's a well, well, uh, uh, you know, uh, rounded fighter and shit. And I, I think that this fight can go either way. Either yeah. way, either I like way. I like the fight. I like the fight. Actually, little nervous about coming back from ring rust to a weight you really in a division you never fought in. That's my concern. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure if that was the best thing to do to fight in a in a weight and to make your debut coming back off of that much time away, and then you're not even fighting in a in a weight you were comfortable in. That's that's why I was like 160. And that's where my concern came into that. You know what? Thinking about it right now, um Sims fought last night also. He's another another great um he's Sims is the one that's from Chicago, Illinois. I had yeah. I had them confused. Who fought yeah. last night also? Bam Bam and he's 42. Huh? No, Bam Bam's like Laura, forty years old. You know what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, man, he's even older than that. He's forty two. <laughs> yeah. He's forty two. You better. You got to tack on two more yeah, years. Yeah, Laura, Laura, right now. Uh, I mean, he's probably. And then on top of it, and then let's let's. Hey, Camachito, Camachito, you know how it goes. You know how it goes. 
A lot of these Cuban fighters lie about their age. Just yeah. like when, okay, yeah, yeah you know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laura, Laura might be a lot older than what they're saying on that fucking, on the paper. Because they put their career, their age down to sell their fights. Okay? So, a lot of these fighters, and I don't talk about this because it's, you know, it's, it's everybody knows in the box is something we don't talk about. I've seen, look at I do this for a living. Yeah. We do, we do, you know. Yeah. And no fighters. You yeah. have, you have no idea the things I have seen when we bring oh. in fighters oh. from other countries. Oh, I, I um, listen, I sometimes the commission just shakes their head because it's uh, the things they do. It, yeah. it, 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 it's crazy. Because the truth is, you know, I don't talk about this because. A fight was a fight. He took the fight, right? When Dante Wilder fought King Kong from Cuba there, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And they put his age up, I laughed. That's the guy, that's the guy that um Michelle Rivera was talking about. That I laughed. Yeah. I laughed. Yeah, I laughed because I know how old that guy is. And I was like, bro, that dude is a lot older than what you guys put up on that. And it if it doesn't really even take much to find this shit out, if you go just try to put up where he was fighting, trying to represent in the Olympics for uh, uh, Cuba and shit or whatever, right? And uh, or if they're fighting in Colombia or Mexico or any of those fighters that kind of did their career in their homeland and eventually got to come to America, you can quickly go look and see some of their amateur fights and what year it was. And you're like, huh? And you're saying, how old is he now? It doesn't make sense. And you know when you see it and you're like, but look, if those men can compete at that age, what he did he look bad? No. Did he look good? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did he handle himself? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if you was man, to know, man, man Boogie is right. They do it a lot in baseball. They a lot. They do a it a lot. lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do that shit. Old man, all the time. But that's just something that we don't talk about. You know what I'm saying? Some yeah. people get their opportunity late. And they, they wish they would have got it in their 20s. So what they're doing is they're living out what they... Because they got the skills to pull it off somewhat. So, hey, it is what it is. But shit like that does happen. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, listen... Fight fans, man, we've been up here chopping it up. Camachito, is there anything else you wanna you wanna touch up or any story you wanted? It? Here's your chance. Let's put it out. Whatever. Um, what you I, 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 anything that I've posted, um, let me see within the past uh, couple of days that maybe I, I can refresh your memory. Um, let's see. Uh, like I told you this morning. Like I told you this morning, um, Shakur said what he said about, uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, the transgender thing in the Olympics. Well, that boxer filed a legal uh, suit against the IOC. She filed, she won the gold medal too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But filed, I posted it this morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She filed. filed. She, got all, filed. she got all the right to do that. She got that. that that's uh, shaming. Um, what they did was, 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 was real horrible because you see, you got to understand that the Olympics knew the truth. Yeah. They knew it. Again, um, Jasmine Camacho Quinn gets gold. Yep. Um, woman soccer team, America gets gold. Yo, and, 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 and Cepeda. Oh. You think Dominican gets gold. Oh yeah, in yes. what? Um, uh, track and field. In track and field? Yes, sir. Nice, nice. She's uh, soy la primera mujer dominicana en obtener un oro olímpico y eso le abre las puertas a la juventud que vienen desde abajo como yo. There she is. Posted it on my um platform. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, and um to all the oh, countries that oh, medal 
Don't That's forget, September 14th, Springfield, Massachusetts, American International College. Rivera Promotions Entertainment presents. Um, we're going to do, I think it is going to be Puerto Rican Parade Weekend. That weekend, there's going to be a, a couple fights. And ours is on a Sunday. We're going to have our boxers participate on Saturday at the Puerto Rican Festival in Springfield. And then we have a card on Sunday. So um, I'll be putting that out too. That'll so be you're so you're yeah. also so you're also going up against Saul Canelo Alvarez and the spear on September. Yes, 4th. yes, we are going up against. <laughs> <all that. Yes. laughs> hey yo, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm just so letting you beware and be known. Oh, you know what I mean? oh, and this yeah. week, and this week, Turkey Alashik is expected to announce. His next big, uh, big card. Yep. Well, you know, I'm pretty sure this man is going to bring a lot more to our sport, and I can't wait. I can't wait. I love everything that he's building. A you lot know, of people. I'm a lot of people are hating. I have seen social media, and a lot of people hating. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, um. Just quickly before we go off, let me just real quick a couple minutes and and interject on on exactly what the where the hate stems from, yeah. And what's going on, right? Check this out, right? A lot of people don't like change, and a lot of people that been in the sport of boxing got their power because exactly of what they own. When you got somebody coming and trying to buy everybody out, soon you start to see that you're surrounded, like the PBC. Because right. they're the ones that don't want to play ball. So now what do you do? You start playing this fucking game that we all do. You start hiring people to talk bad or good about you. The other side is saying that Prince Alashid is bad for the sport and all this. Because these people don't want to go home. And Alashid's like, yo, what do you want for money? I'll make you rich. Just leave. I want to control boxing. And some people are like, it was never about the money for me. It was about the fame, about knowing that who I am, the respect I get from the people when I walk in the room, the 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 kissing ass that people kiss my ass, the power that comes along with being in that kind of position. And here comes Prince out of sea. He's going to take that all away from me. He's going to buy me out. They're going to push me out the game. Where would I be? What would I go to do? But... But not everybody's that happy. Just goes, that just goes to show you that the smart ones, if you can't beat them, join them. Join them. And and listen, he look, has, look. He has partnered up with four of the top five promotional companies. Yep. Four of the top five. Yeah. The only one is PBC. And PBC. because they got a big eagle, and Al yeah. Heyman is just Al Heyman. Listen, listen, look, I, I, I look, the, the what that's a lot of power what the sheik already has. And as you can see, even the people he's working with already, Oscar de la Hoya was feeling some kind of way in that ring. Like the uh, sheik was pushing him to make Ortiz fight Terrence. And what was Oscar doing? He was um saying, Oh, Tim Zoo's still here. Why can't Terrence fight Tim Zhu. That's because Oscar doesn't want to sacrifice his guy. And then she uh, looked at him and said, we don't want Tim Zhu. We want your boy fighting against Terrence Crawford. And then here goes Oscar De La Hoya staying on stage. And he's like, yeah, so that'll be, that'll be a great fight. That'll be a great fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, he starts to agree. But you saw his pushback when Alashik was like, next fight, Terrence and your boy. What did Oscar and, say? And then he said, "Well, uh, you were going to actually say something about Cepeda a little while ago. Yeah. And then he said, eh, right. Jose Shakur Cepeda. Right. And that's another Oscar guy. Right? So Oscar feels like, damn homeboy, you're fucking taking out all my fighters. You're putting me out there. Out there. And, and you see how these guys start to like, you know, at one time they were bosses. 
They were fuck. Oscar De La Hoya has been a boss his entire boxing fucking run. And and and, and hey, you want you want to hear something funny? This is another um, another one that's been trolling. Um, did you hear what Oscar told um, um, Berlanga the other day? What? That he's more Puerto Rican. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, clap, clap back and Thursday. Clap back Thursday. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. Now, look, is he lying? No, he's not lying because okay, Oscar then. lives. Okay, then. Oscar was married. Yes, to, for to six Puerto, years to a Puerto Rican and lived six years in Puerto Rico. Right. So, or as Berlanga was born in Brooklyn. Doesn't know a lick of Spanish, or if he does, it's not not fluent. Yeah. Hasn't lived in Puerto Rico. I mean, yeah, by blood. But okay. Okay. Now listen. Um, shots fired. Shots fired, right? From Oscar's side, right? Shots yeah. fired. Right? Yeah. Okay. Ironically, Oscar de la Hoya knows what it's like to be in Berlanga's shoes. Let's remember that the Mexicans didn't accept him while yeah. he was boxing. Because he was considered an American Mexican. American. Same thing with Berlanga. So what do you do? What do you do? You know, you are Mexican, bro. You are going to take shots at homeboy. Right? Now, he's also been on social media saying he hopes Berlanga knocks out Saul Canelo Alvarez. Because of the beef. That Oscar De La Hoya has with Saul Canelo Alvarez. When he get on and he told him, put some fucking respect on my name. So Oscar, you know, you know how he is. He picks beasts with everybody. Both sides. You know, because because no sooner did he diss Berlanga, he went on saying, I want Berlanga to win. You know what I mean? So, you know, this is just ways of keeping Oscar De La Hoya's name, face, and image of relevant, relevant. in the sport of boxing. Mm -hmm. And good promotion, good publicity, bad publicity, it's all publicity. It's, publicity. it's, it's all, all publicity. It's all okay? publicity. Oscar De La Hoya is very smart in what he was doing. If you didn't rec recognize what he did after that fight with Virgil Ortiz, that even the commentator in the ring said, Oscar, where did you go? Well, Oscar left us. You saw that, right? You saw that, right? Because they he knew he was about to ask some some questions, some shit, and he, Oscar needed to answer for some shit. Right. And Oscar fucking skated out of that ring. Okay. Decided to op out. And, you know, I'll see you on Clapback Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, and he off. yo, Oscar, yo, he's a little slime ball, but yeah, you can see where now yeah, he, did it. he did it to um Ryan Garcia when Ryan Garcia actually both of them, so did um, um, Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. Um, they just left the building, yeah. didn't show up to the post uh press conference, post fight press conference, and but then. You know, when he went against Haney, it was all love again. So that's a promoter. You know, uh, I'm a promoter, so I know how it is. It's crazy. It's crazy, right? That um, they're like, nah, Ortiz clearly won the fight, but he's on his way to the hospital. <laughs> Yo, he won the fight clearly, but he's in the ambulance right now. Like your your fighter's the one that's taking that ride. Like, yo, it's crazy. But, but this is why I'm telling you that um. I, I was hoping for a draw and that a rematch was announced immediately. Uh, I didn't want to fight that immediately wept under the rug. Sign that rematch immediately. Yeah, I hope they do. I, yo, I would love. Tell me, say that. Say it, man. I would like to see. You know, when you see one fight and they talking about the rematch, and you're like, yeah. I don't really want to see that fight again. Because, you know, first of all, this was something people needed to see about Virgil Ortiz who had a hundred percent knockout ratio. Told you that shit wasn't equal. Okay. A hundred percent knockout ratio. Now the first time you get tested to uncharted waters, 
uh, a rarely, terribly unknown fighter. Not right. all the, a and casual no, fan don't know who no, he is. No, let's not go there because he, he he's a champion. He's a legit world champion. At I don't world. think a person, basically everybody that watched this fight last night, the only reason why they knew him, because his name was on the fucking next for Virgil. Because I'm going to tell you right now, as a Ukrainian fighter, right? I I cover sports and I barely know anything about them. I can imagine a casual. Now, that's all I'm saying. So his first real challenge. Uh, well, I mean, I knew who the kid was because he fought one of our own. Uh, Rashid. That's why you know him. That's Rashid. why you know him. Had he not I, fought your guy, would you know him? Well, Tell because the truth. I follow boxing. Tell the truth. I, I, I listen. It's like when uh, Madrimov, like with uh, Madrimov, when he fought Crawford, Madrimov. I, really I wouldn't knew. have known who he was. Right, 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 right. I mean, you know of the guy because he's a world champion, and obviously, if you follow boxing and you're also in media and you promote like I do, you're surrounded by boxing. Right. You, you got to know who all the world champions are. At least you got to know the world. I can't know everybody, and I don't claim to know everyone. Right, right. Okay? right. I don't, I don't, I don't, um, um, I'm a historian. I, I love the sport, and I try to learn more and more about the sport. I've never claimed to know everything about this sport or every fighter in every weight division. No. I will look a person up when I need to, and I will go on. There's just too many names that fluctuate in the sport, and I wasn't blessed with that kind of brain. Like, some people got photo image. Listen, let, me see some... let me tell you something. When my yeah. brother was still fighting, when my brother was still fighting, um, I remember Frankie, Frankie, the day my brother fought Frankie Randall. Yeah. That's when I, I was like, damn, I, I really have remembered Every guy in every division. Yeah. Every guy, because then we went to Frankie Randall's um, dressing room because my nephew wanted a picture. Right. And then... Um, you I start to realize him. what you know, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And then you get older. Yeah. And names change. Yeah. Everybody yeah, fluctuates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And never stays the, the same. 80s, in the 80s, I knew... Um, listen, there was a time at 147 pounds, right? That you had Hagler, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, the Puerto Rican beast who was a champion at 17 years old, Benitez, Roberto Duran, Pepino Cuevas, Tommy Hitman Hurts. I mean, I could go on and on of all the beasts in one division. Did the marvelous, marvelous Hagler already fight at one forty seven, or did he start at one fifty four? No, he fought at forty seven. He when did he fought locally here, because remember, yeah. he's from here. Yeah, yeah. He started in those. You places. see, you see, because I always remember that his career for me was a little bit of a blur. When I came to find out about him, I was a young man, but my father and uncles always loved him. So I didn't realize how much I did know, in fact, about him. But I do know this, that he had already got had like 40 fucking fights before he got his first title fight. So he was highly avoided. He was left handed, strong as hell and athletic as fuck. And nobody wanted to fight him that I remember that the the mayor, the Kennedys at the time petitioned for Marvelous Marvelous Hagler to get his first title fight, which in fact he lost, right? He gets another fight and he goes out to, um, out there in, um, fucking, um, the UK out there and he fights, he beats the guy in the ring. And for the first time in boxing history, Marvelous Marvelous Hagler was the only fighter in history to never ceremoniously be awarded his title in the ring. They threw stuff at him and everything. They covered him and they escorted him out of the ring. And the British it took a black eye that day in boxing. A bunch of drunken fans were spitting at him. 
saying all kind of profanity, but that actually ended up benefiting him. They were so embarrassed as a country that they invited him back and they treated him like royalty, red carpet treatment. He he had a couple movies out there. He was like a superstar. Like after boxing, because of that one day, really changed his life. And he ended up living and dying, carrying his, his days out there. He was a real special fighter for me. He trained in Brockton. He wore the war war. And he locked in and he didn't go to those big gyms with big coaches. He went in, we really yeah. went into Rocky yeah. style. We read, we get our the, the ring when we do our fights. It's from the same gym he used to train in, in Brockton, the Pet the Petronellis. Yeah, yeah. Petronelli's. So, so you know, um, as you can see, as I start talking to him, all these memories start flooding back into my head, and I still eat, I'm like talking and saying to myself, wow, you do remember a lot about him, you know? And um, that's that's just the history of wh how we grew up and the fighters that were around us. And we start to realize that, you know, our uncles and dads, for anyway, for me, my dad was a boxer and he used to take me to Atlanta City. And my brother told me, actually, I, 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 I knew some of these top promoters and I was just too little. You know, I was like three, two, whatever, four, whatever the age I was. I don't, I don't remember it, but, um, my father always kept us around boxing or talked about boxing. And it was just something that when I started doing this, I started realizing my passion and my love. And I, I wasn't able because of my choices, um, to become the boxer I wanted to be, but it, it never took away from my eye and my vision of how I perceive boxing. I didn't have to become a world champion to know what I'm looking at and to have a real high understanding of what boxing and what it, it takes to be a fighter and to pull off some of the things that some of these fighters are pulling off, making look very easy. Make no mistake that the things that these fighters are doing nowadays, like, you know, if Bird checked last night, I mean, with Terrence Crawford wanted to, he could have switched it up lefty and righty with him. He was one of the few men that can do that with Terrence Crawford. If Terrence Crawford at any point in that fight wait, decided. Wait. You said Burichek? I mean, uh, uh, Israel. Madrimal. Madrimal. Sorry, I did. Thank you. Israel Madrimal. Thank you so much. I do have a tendency of doing that. That Israel Madrimal could have switched it up with Terrence Crawford. And he, if Terrence Crawford would have got funny in that fight and said, let me change, he would have looked at him and went, I can do that. And been comfortable. It goes to show you the level of skill of what these guys and how. Look at the fighters that are all transition. Look at the Abdullah Masons, the um, um, Camille Moltons. Look at the the Keyshawn Davises. Look at look at Zandu Carrington's and uh, he's about to fight too. And mm -hmm. and um, look at look at how boxing's evolving. Truly, look at it. And um, I understand what with my eye how hard it is and how long it would take a kid for you to train him from day one to look like that. And I understand that some of these men were born to fight. And I can recognize that some of these guys, boxing just falls for them. And it's not like that for every person in the world. If you see what Adula Madison is doing and you think that anyone can do that, you're fucking crazy. That kid was born to fight. Okay? And the things he's doing well, in there. Some guys are just naturals at it. They're gifted. They're truly gifted. They're and when you can take, yeah, you can take God-given talent and match that with hard work and dedication, that's a dangerous combination. And you and when it's it's sad when you see a kid fall victim to his own talent. He's so talented. He doesn't want to train as much, doesn't want to put anything behind it. He's always been the best kid in the gym. Man, and they get the rude awakening. I remember, I remember the first time I saw Sweepy Riddicker live. Yep. You know, I used to see him in, 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 you know, on TV and, you know, the way he would go all the way down, you know, in that ring and come up with a, with an uppercut and still catch the guy all the way down from the floor. Like 
you know, that, that dude was just super talented. And um, it, like when I saw Roy Jones also in Pensacola, because oh. it's, 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 you know, he used to do crazy shit. shit that you couldn't even see when he was training and sparring, he would touch his shoe. I mean, like, Papa touch his shoe, it's like showing off, but you know, it was just so like, you see that and you're in awe. Like the talent is just crazy. And some guys are just- I was in awe at Roy Jones's speed from mid distance to close to hitting you. That burst that he had, <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. It was crazy. It, it it didn't make sense that no one could adjust to it. It didn't it didn't make sense. And in TV, it uh, to 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 you know to the anybody that's listening or or want to go back and watch his videos, the videos don't do him justice when you see it live. When you see it live and you actually see him go like that, you're you're like you, I can remember how I said that didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. I never saw no one do no dumb shit like that. Like it would go like from there to his 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 distance where he had that first step that would lunge and hit you. It was something else. That was truly truly like he was he was different. That man was really different. Roy Jones was different for me. I yeah. I I still don't see. I see people like whenever you see a fighter try to play um Mayweather style. Always replicate it, but never duplicate it. Never. There's been no one to pull off that style like him. When I saw Phoenix Trinidad fight against um, Bernard Hopkins, uh, Hopkins in uh, Madison Square Garden in New York City, I saw that was there live. I saw I was, that. I was there. I I I, I, I saw T Felix Trinidad and Tito. He came out with the cop hat. It was right after the 9-11. They postponed the fight. Remember? And uh, we got there, we watched the fight and everything. And watching what Bernard was doing, it was hard to give him credit because I was rooting against him, but I knew what he was doing. I knew what he was doing in the ring. And it, 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 was, it hurt me that Felix wasn't making no adjustments. And you know how it was walking out of there. You saw so many sp Spanish flags down, like walking out. Some people were even crying. Some were arguing and shit. You remember that night. You know what I'm saying? If you were there, you were there. You would oh, know. Yeah. I was uh, at the press conference and everything. Yeah, I was there. And fucking, like, when you see some of these fighters up close in person that you really, like, like when I was in Puerto Rico and I was watching Subriel fight, you know, it, it looks different from being live and actually watching him than fucking watching it on TV. It's just different. You know, that kid from Puerto Rico, the one I took the picture with, with the belt, I think his name was I, something, I forget what his name was. It starts with an S or some shit, I forget who it was. Yo, he was a lot faster in the ring than what I, you know, I initially thought when I'm watching him live, I'm like, yeah. So it reminds me of how good some of these guys actually is. You know what I mean? And when you speak speak about some of the the older talented fighters, like your 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 marvelous ones, you know, um, Hitman Hearns was a baby in the ring fighting these men. Don't don't forget when Hitman Hearns fought Marvelous, he was all of twenty three years old. Wait, wait, wait! What are you talking about? Listen, Benitez turned pro at fifteen years old. Yeah, that what? was some illegal shit. What? That was an illegal. That listen, was some illegal shit. Listen, he won his first world champion at seventeen. Yeah, that's crazy, right? At 17 years old, talking about baby fighting grown men. I know, right? Talking about baby, yeah. It's like that. this kid, um, 18 years old. You know what I mean? At the yeah. Mayweather gym. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Camille Moen? 18 years old. Fighting grown-ass men, bro. Oh, smash that like button. Hit those like buttons. Subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, I'm a little leaguer when it comes to the YouTube, but if you guys subscribe, you guys help out, brother. I, I do more social media. Um, so hit it. Yep, can't forget Hector Camacho. Terrell, you're right, the legend. Terrell, 
Terrell, listen, they, oh man, there's a lot of great fights. We could, we could, we, we could talk. We'd be here all fucking day, bro. But yeah, the 23, um, that was a, that he was, he was in there fighting with, um, grown ass men and shit. You know, you also had, uh, one of the best Mexican fighters that died in a car accident. Uh, he was in fact, 19 years old, I believe. Uh, Oh my God, was he good? He he was actually uh, living in Puerto Rico. Yo, he got taken away from us too early. Yeah, I would have loved to see what he had, would have done as a fighter because me personally, he beat our guy. Yeah, he did. He beat our guy, and you know, hats off to him. But as my warrior fighter, you know, I don't I don't see race. I don't see nothing. All I see is who, what are you as a warrior? My entire question in my life is, who is the best fighter in the world? What does he look like? Where does he come from? You know what I'm saying? I want to see who that guy is. I'm curious, you know, because there was at one point in my life, I felt like I was invincible. I was nowhere near the best fighter in the world. But, you know, I I, I wish I would have stood dedicated and, and stood to my ways and made better decisions, but I didn't. And... And if I have to see it my way to the men and women that do lace it up and give me those moments and, and I jump out of my seat and have me and my family come together over a fight, I appreciate those moments. And you have to understand that some of us are born with a warrior spirit inside. We can't turn it off. There used to be a days and times, even up to now, I don't stop thinking about fighting. I can't turn it off. It's what I think about. It's all I think about. And I'm not, you know, saying it to try to sound tough, but it's it's the truth. And I feel what these fighters feel. I know why they fight. I know the respect. I know what it's like to fight a guy, go 12 rounds with a guy, and then go out to dinner with him, and he gained my respect. I know what that's like. I know the purity of this sport and why we need it. There are men we from it comes from our generation. We hunted, we fought in coliseums, everything. We are fighters. And the men and women that know this and breathe, eat this, know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And that's boxing for me. So fight fans, thank you for tuning in, guys. I hope you guys got something out of there somewhere in this whole video. There was a message, okay, and I hope you got it. I understand at the beginning there was a little bit of hiccups and things, but um, shit happens. But sometimes good things can come out of bad starts. So I hope you guys got something good after this video. My co-host and always anchorman, Jose Camachito Rivera. You can follow him on his social media platforms. His name is up right here. So um, listen, Fight Fan, it's always been a pleasure. And like always, I'm on to the next one. After this one, here at Round 1 Sports Talk, peace. Camachito, say what's up.